Hey, so you've got a NAS, or you're thinking about getting a NAS, and you wanna know what are some cool things that you can do on your NAS. We're gonna be showing you six cool things that you can do on a NAS. So I've got a uh, Synology NAS, I've got a Netgear NAS, personally, uh, because I work in tech as well, I've also got other brands of NASs that I've worked with in different companies throughout the years. NASs are great and they can serve a myriad of different purposes. Now, my name is Emilio and I work in tech and I love it. And uh, I also release videos every single week, generally twice a week on all things tech. Why don't you click on the button and on the bell so you don't miss out on any of these future video releases. So we're gonna be showing you just my top six, but that is not the extensive list. Maybe you can let me know in the comments below what NAS you've got running. Are you running a Synology? Are you running a QNAP? Are you running Dell EMC NAS? So number one, set it up as a media server. You've got your home movies, stuff that you've recorded. Uh, you've maybe got some TV shows, some movies that you've got um, from places. And uh, it would be great to be able to sort and manage and control all of these in one central location. And yes, you can do that with a NAS. You're essentially converting the NAS, which is primarily gonna be used for file storage, right? You're gonna use a NAS to store all your files and your folders and everything like that, but also use it to store all of your videos and your media, and then install some software onto that NAS to convert it into a media repository, a, a media server. A good example of this would be something called Plex. Now, Plex is my favorite, there are others, but I love Plex and you can easily install Plex on most of the NASs out there, not all of them, but many of them. And then you point Plex to all of the data, all of the media that you've got on your NAS. And then Plex goes off to the internet and scans and downloads the cover art, downloads the plot, the cast, all of that information. And then you can go to your smart TV, to your Apple TV, to your phone. You have the Plex app on there. You can open it up and there you go. You've got access to Plex. And it is the best way, in my opinion, to manage all of your media in one spot. So that's number one. How about running a virtual machine on your NAS? So what am I talking about here? Well, you've got a physical computer, right? Your computer, you're, you're maybe watching this, maybe on a phone, maybe you're watching this on a computer. Well, there's your computer. It's a physical computer. In the enterprise world, in, in, the, in the world of the business, you've got these things called virtual machines and you have now virtual servers, computers that are virtualized. So you can run multiple computers inside one computer, which is great. Most NASs nowadays allow you to do this functionality. So you can actually have a virtual machine running on your NAS. So you can actually have a version of Windows 10 or Windows 11 running directly on your NAS. Now, of course, by doing this, you are gonna be using some of the resources that come bundled with your NAS because you have to share some of the CPU, some of the RAM usage of your NAS with this new virtual machine. But hey, that functionality is there and it's great. How about making your own cloud? This is number three. So you've got the cloud services that you may be familiar with, such as Dropbox, you've got Google Drive, right? And, and you, you set up a Dropbox account. Dropbox, somewhere out in the cyber web somewhere, they've got their servers and they've got their storage and they're giving you a little portion of their storage for you to be able to copy your files to. And of course, you're gonna be able to copy those files on your computer, you upload them to, via a browser. Well, you can do the same sort of thing on a NAS. You can actually make your NAS, you've got files already on the NAS, I mean, that's the whole point of it, of course, but you can convert that into a cloud service. So you could be anywhere in the world and log in to your NAS's data, acting as if it's a cloud service. Now, of course, by doing this, you are exposing your NAS a little bit to the internet. So you wanna make sure that before you do this, you do set it up with proper permissions and proper security, but it's great because you can actually make your NAS a cloud service. You can share it with your friends. You can have your friends log in, download stuff from it, upload stuff to it. My number four here is uh, setting up a website. Now, um, a lot of people like to have websites. They like to talk about things that they do. I've got my own website if you wanna check it out, uh, emilioaguero.net for those playing at home. But it's super easy to be able to set up your NAS with some software to be able to actually get it converted as a web server. So you're making it into a web server. A good one, which is one that I use, is called WordPress. And a lot of NASs nowadays, you can actually download 
WordPress directly. You install it, you configure it, it installs the back end. There's like a database and there's Apache and there's all these other sort of things in the background that need to be set up. But then you actually essentially are running a website from your NAS. You can make it look really, really cool. And with WordPress, you've got these things called themes. So you can make it customizable to you and you can make it look great. And then all you got to do is you essentially have to then buy yourself a domain name. So you have to go to a company online to register for a domain name. I've got a link in the description below for a cheap domain name if you are interested, by the way. You are then exposing your NAS a little bit out to the internet. But if you've got it set up properly, if you've got it set up secure, it will work great. And then you can host a website straight from your own NAS. Now that ties on perfectly to our number five, which is set up an email server. The big email providers, you got Gmail, Hotmail. That was a that was a really good one. In the corporate world, you've got Microsoft Exchange. Like we've talked about before, you can download some software, you can configure it in the settings, wherever it may be on your NAS and configure it as an email server. Very similarly, you'll have to get yourself some sort of a domain name to be able to register the name that you want to use to be able to send and receive emails. And then you yourself, you own the email space. So before we move on to the last one, as I said, please remember to subscribe to my channel. I love it that you are watching this video and that is great, but subscribing lets me know that you care and that you want to watch future videos that I'm releasing. So do click on that button and on the bell that would be excellent. So number six, which I think is one of the most important ones of all, is to use it to back up your data. Now your NAS itself stores a lot of your data already on it, right? So you've got all of your data already sitting on there and that is excellent. But then you've got your computer, maybe you've got a Windows, you've got a Mac computer, you've got all of your data on there. So what I recommend is using your NAS as a backup destination. You can set up backup software on those and point your backups to your NAS so that you have the confidence that all of your data on your computer is also backed up on the NAS. Now, one little bonus thing here, what if your NAS fails? Well, something that I would also recommend is maybe having a NAS backup, having an external hard drive connected to your NAS so you can also back that up as well because the worst thing that could happen would be for you to lose all of your data on your NAS and you don't have a backup of that somewhere else. So they were my six, as I said, comment below. Let me know what NAS you've got. Let me know if these tips were helpful for you. Like this video, give me a thumbs up as well. And do also, as I said, subscribe, click on the button on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my video releases. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.